Hi, this is Phil Bolsta. Allow me to introduce Christine Closer, founder of the Transformational Author Movement. Thank you for joining us today, Christine. Oh, well, thank you for having me here, Phil. I'm excited to see what transpires in our time together. <laughs> me too. Well, let's, let's get right to the questions I have for you. You refer to yourself as a transformation catalyst for authors. What does that mean? Oh, what it means is that people can't help but experience radical transformation when they come into my world. Um, they come in, they think they want to write a book, I help them write their book, but something sets on fire inside of them by working with me, going through my programs, getting their book written, that they just have a whole new experience of themselves. And a lot of people have, you know, blamed me uh, for the fact that their lives are radically different than they used to be. I, uh, I catalyze, I think, more than anything to get people to step into who they're really here to be and to see their brilliance and to trust their brilliance and own their brilliance. And uh, I, you know, have been blessed with a pretty, you know, solid ability to do that. Sounds transformational. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> so how did you end up founding the transformational author movement? Uh, long story or short story, Phil? <laughs> We've got time. Okay. Um, I'll go back then to 2000, well, probably 2000. When I had a dream of being an author, I also had happened to found, sort of by happenstance, um, a women's networking group in Los Angeles called the Network for Empowering Women Entrepreneurs. And uh, I heard a lot of my members also say for years, like I had, that they want to become published authors. So after a couple of years of getting sick and tired of, you know, hearing everyone say this and no one really doing it except a small handful, I said, well, you know, Chicken Soup for the Soul is doing it. Why don't we do it? Let's get together. Let's each write a chapter. Let's, you know, everyone contribute some money and I'll figure out how to make this thing happen. And I became a published author along with 39 of my members. Uh, that book, I thought, great check it off the bucket list, we're done with that book thing. Uh, except that book hit uh, Entrepreneur Magazine in print, being reviewed as one of the top books for women to read in the summer of 20, uh, 2005 when it came out. And I just kind of always, you know, stayed connected with the book stuff, but at arm's length. Because um, like some of you perhaps watching, I had a period of my life where I kind of got sucked in to doing something that really wasn't what I was put on this earth to do. Um, I had a lot of teachers and mentors that I paid a lot of money, and I saw everyone I knew making money was making money by teaching other people how to make money. And I thought, well, I guess if I'm going to make money, I need to teach people how to do that. So I did my version of that, really combining soulfulness with business, um, but the ultimate bottom line was, you know, putting soul in your business and money in your bank and keep people came to me because they wanted the money in the bank more than they wanted the soul in the business is what I discovered. And uh, in my experience, it was very clearly after I built, you know, a successful half million dollar business, um, I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like this. I can't do this. Um, it's not supposed to be this hard. It's not supposed to be this challenging. Uh, you know, it's just supposed to be filled with more joy and a lot less stress. Um, and I had to come to a moment where I knew that I couldn't go on. I couldn't keep doing what was just against every cell of my being. And I knew that as a result of that decision, there was a good chance that I would end up going through a bankruptcy that I could potentially lose my house, um, lose who I had known myself to be as far as my identity, which was based very much on the external at the time. Um, and I, you know, had that moment and I just said, I, I can't, I, I understand what the risk is, but I can't keep doing this. It will be like a slow death. Um, so I surrendered, I let go. Um, it ended up being the most liberating thing I've done and by far the most challenging thing I've done. 
And uh, when the worst was the worst, which was the worst, the very you know first day of December 2010, so just a couple years ago, I remember just feeling like I was at the bottom. And then I got some very surprising, unexpected news from a partner I'd bring in to help me run the what was a very small publishing part um, of my business at that time, that she wanted the business. Mm-hmm. And this was the day before I was going in to file my bankruptcy. So I had to scrap the bankruptcy at the moment, deal with this situation that just came up. And after six weeks of fighting uh, to keep my business on January 20th of 2011, I let it go. And that was the last shred of stability that I had. Um, And what she paid me for the business didn't even cover the attorney's bills. So if you're thinking, well, she sold her business, uh, it actually cost me money to sell the business to my business partner. So there I am, January 2011, uh, desperate, really, terrified, on the verge of losing my home, going through a foreclosure, dealing with refiling the bankruptcy after this transaction occurred. And uh, to say that I was lost um, is an understatement. I remember days where I had to walk around my house holding the walls because the world felt so unsteady, I couldn't even walk straight. I mean, that's how disoriented I was. After I moved through it, just the anger, the rage, the despair, the pain of that situation with a a two-hour-a-day meditation practice is what got me through it, um, I began to ask, "How how are you using me? What am I here to do? I I trusted you, God, the universe, spirit, source, enough to let go and surrender like this. But show me, show me where I'm supposed to be next because I can't see it. And that's where this author, transformational author concept came in. Um, and I got it and I was like, oh, I'm supposed to do this. Even though the year before in 2010, I wanted to do it and it got nixed by every savvy marketer I knew. They said it would never fly. It stinks. Don't use that name. It's horrible. You can never do anything with it. So here I am, bankrupt on the verge of homelessness, and I get this name. And I have to trust my instinct and disregard everything that my marketing you know, uh, colleagues with seven multi-seven-figure businesses told me. And I did. And I went online, and I'm like, okay, this transformational author thing. So I went to Google. What's the first thing you do when you have an idea? You go to Google and check it out and see what's out there. So I Googled transformational author in February of 2011 didn't get any results. There was nothing that I found on the internet that put those words together in that way. Um, So then I was faced with having to define what a transformational author was, name it and claim it as my unique and specific niche in the market. So uh, that you said we had time. So that was a long version. (laughs) Well, that's wonderful. I appreciate it. Thank you for being so vulnerable and authentic. It's uh... Uh, that's what people can relate to. They say, hey, this is someone just like me. I've been there, and that's inspiring. Uh, you said you had to define tra- what a transformational author is. What is the definition? How, is, how does a transformational author differ from a, a regular author? Um, well, for me, I just that, I had to sit down and ask myself that question. It's like, well, I couldn't really come up with a nice package Webster-type definition, um, but there were four different lenses uh, that I saw a transformational author lived through to really sort of be in this space. Like, okay, this is how you know you're a transformational author. It's not necessarily about the content that you're writing. It's about who you're being and the impact you're having in the process. So there's four levels. The first level of being a transformational author is where you really understand that the writing of the book itself is a transformational process. Um, not that you're writing this book and you're trying to, you know, crank it out and, you know, 48 hours and just get it done and be done with it, but you're actually allowing the book to be a tool for perhaps the most powerful transformation you've experienced in your life. Um, as I have seen for some of my clients, they say there's nothing that has transformed as, as much as writing their book. So that's the first level. You really got to be committed and clear that this is about your transformation. Then the second level is that you need to also be clear and committed to the transformation that you yearn for for your readers. 
Okay. Beyond like, oh, I hope my readers get this. It's like, no, deeper than that. What is the deep, deep transformation you yearn for, for them? Do you want them to, you know, have an incredibly amazing, passionate, awesome marriage? Do you want them to experience the health that they've always been yearning for? Are you really committed to helping them discover and access and find and live from that truth inside of them? Um, Whatever it is, like, what do you want most for them? So that's the second lens to look through. Now, the third level, the third lens to look through is about seeing also that a book can be just the beginning, and it actually has the power to transform your business, either from no business to a business around your book or to an existing business that just explodes and moves and serves more people because that book can catalyze that transformation in the business. Um, We all, you know, there's like there's people that we didn't know, and then they wrote a book, and all of a sudden we see them everywhere, and they're serving hundreds thousands, some of them hundreds of thousands. So that's the third level is is really understanding that, wow, this book can actually not just transform myself and my readers, but it also has the potential to transform my business in a way that allows me to serve more people more deeply. And then the fourth level, which I just love, not that I don't love the other three, but this is kind of like my motivation in doing what I do for authors. And the fourth level is about really being committed and understanding that there is a transformation that you can provide for the world. Like if every person on the planet read your book, what's the possibility for humanity? What's the possibility for our world? And if even though maybe every person on the planet will most likely not read your book, but when you can have that kind of vision And really see, wow, this message can create global change. Even if there's only 100 people that read your book with the ripple effect and the butterfly effect and knowing energetically that what we do here impacts people we will never know, meet, or see on the other side of the planet. Um, Your book and the transformations that you put out, just, you know, one bit by one bit, um, can actually impact the world. So transformational authors understand that they're not just writing for themselves and the readers, but they're writing really for the healing of the planet and all of humanity um, through what they teach by them doing their part fully. So those are the four lenses that I developed when I you know, was going through this process uh, just over three years ago. So it's really about infusing the content with intent. You bet. Well okay. said. So you talk about the three whys that every transformational author needs to know. What are the three whys? (laughs) Well, the first why is why you, okay? Why you? Like, why are you the person to be writing this book? And perhaps actually before you ask that question, you want to ask yourself, why this book, right? There could be several books that you're interested in writing, but there's one that rises to the surface, Why this book? Why do you care about it? Why do you love it? Why are you willing to sit in front of your computer, fingers to the keyboard, or some people still writing pen to paper? You know, why are you willing to do all of that? What's the big motivation underneath? And I have a feeling some of that will have to do with what you discover by going through those four levels of transformation. Um, Then you ask yourself, why you? There may be a thousand books out there already on your topic, Right? We all know how big some of the sections of the bookstore are health, diet, self help, relationships. Um, you know, there's a lot, but there's something unique. There's a flavor that you and only you have. Um, and it's important for you to really dig a little bit deep and understand why you. Why are you the person to write this thousand and first book on your topic? And the reason why it's important to understand that is because there are people out there who have read a hundred other books on the topic and still haven't gotten the transformation that they're looking for. And for some of those people, when they read your book, it'll be like the pieces of the puzzle fall together, that they can finally hear what they've read so many times, but they actually don't get it until they get it from you. So you've got a unique flavor and you need to know 
Why you? What makes you special in this particular area? And then the third why is why now? Right? Why now? Chances are you've been thinking about this book for a long time. I have had some clients. I just spoke with one recently in San Diego. I was uh, speaking at a Lisa Nichols event in San Diego, and I had everyone stand in the room. And I actually had them slowly by slowly kind of sit back down based on how long the book's been inside of them. You know, if it's been inside of you for um, less than five years, sit down. Less than 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. 40 years, and there was actually someone in that room who had had their book inside of them for 44 years. And there was something about her. She knew. She was in that room learning about speaking and writing because it was time. And she knew why now was the time for her. And it's important for you, too, to know not just why this book and why you, but why now. So those are the three whys. I can relate to all of that. <laughs> I have a question, though. When I was writing yeah. my book, Through God's Eyes, I knew I had to write it, but I knew I wasn't ready to write it. And it took eight years of gathering material before I thought, okay, now I'm ready. Yeah. Do you work with people who think they're ready but aren't ready yet? And how do you tell them that? Yeah, there are. You know, there are some people who... Um, think they're ready and aren't, absolutely, like you. And I've been talking about a book that I've, you know, been writing for three years, but it hasn't come out yet. All of a sudden, I'm feeling it really starting to bubble more. Um, And I have an agent waiting for the proposal, so I need to get on it. But um, if they're not ready, typically what I invite them to do is actually take on the process of writing as an exercise, as part of the preparation for being ready. Um, What I've discovered is, as you've heard me talk about before, the process itself is transformational. So I've actually coached people to write the book, everything they need to get out, all that mishmash inside them has them actually not ready, and put it on the page as if no one's going to read it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just the first time through is their writing for their process, um, not for the reader, not for the reader's transformation, but that first level transformation of self for their own transformation so that they are ready then to go through another round where they are in a different position, healed, more whole, um, and able to come from that place of not just feeling like they're ready, but having gone through a process where they know deep inside that they're ready. And uh, some people that just relieve the pressure for it to be right and, and perfect and the exercise of writing itself becomes the preparation that does ready them for the real writing. Well, what about people who are ready in terms of they have the wisdom, the knowledge to say what they want to say in a book, but they just are not skilled writers Do you Ah. work with editing (laughs) their book? Because there's a lot of people out there who think they can write and they can't, but their content, their ideas are great. Yeah, yeah. Well, what I often tell people is you don't necessarily have to be a writer to be an author. And they go, what? Like, what do you mean? There are people who have a deep, profound passion of words, and they love seeing the words form on the page and perfecting the words to really communicate exactly what they want to communicate. Um, and they're dedicated to the practice of writing. Um, that's, that's not me, uh, and that's not a lot of the people that I work with. So I tell them, you know, don't try to be a perfect writer. Just get down what you need to get down because a good editor, and I, I am a good editor, though I'm not, I don't, I'm not available for hire as an editor. Um, but I tell people that when you find the right editor to help you, they can take what you've got down and you can work in partnership with them to really make it sing off the page. So don't let things like grammar and run-on sentences um, and not knowing where to put a colon or a semicolon or a comma um, or make a new paragraph, like don't let any of the structure of writing stop you. The most important thing here is that you know you're a messenger and you get your messenger out. 
and you can give the box to your editor and they can wrap it in the beautiful paper and the bows to present it to the world in a way that's easily readable, easily digestible. So, uh, yeah, you don't have to be a writer necessarily to be an author. Okay. And I haven't had a chance yet to read your book, Pebbles in the Pond, Transforming the World One Person at a Time, but it looks like that would be an excellent resource for would-be authors who are struggling. Has that been your experience? Absolutely. You know, that whole book is just filled with amazing stories of transformation. Um, I can't help. I mean, every time I read the stories from my clients, um, I need a box of Kleenex next to me for a, a lot of them. Um, because these are people from around the world, I think a dozen different countries who have participated and they're all stories of challenge, of faith, of hope, and not like any kind of specific religious-based faith, just a knowing that there was a higher purpose, that this challenge was serving them in some way. And they all come around to just discover magnificence and blessings and miracles, whether they've you know, been through cancer, or lost a spouse, in my case, lost my house, um, kept my spouse barely through that difficult time, but lost my house and people who have gone through all sorts of different experiences in life. Um, you know, people who have suffered from PTSD and uh, really traumatic abuse uh, circumstances, but each one of them like a shining ray of light. And it's one of those books that if you ever felt like you couldn't do something, you can't get through that book and say to yourself that you can't Mm -hmm. Um, because you have proof after proof after proof of people who have been, you know, to excuse my language, but have been to hell and back um, and are stronger for it, who are brighter lights for it um, and who are people who are standing on that story to transform other people's lives. So, uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend you pick that up. We actually have the third wave of that book is coming out on June 24th. Oh, great. And you can, yeah, you can just find it at Amazon, Pebbles in the Pond. So if somebody wants to work with you, what does that look like? Do they Skype you? Do they call you? Do they work one-on-one? Do they see you in person? Do they oh. email? What All of that? There's a number of different ways because, I, I mean, literally, I serve tens of thousands of authors around the planet. So there are a number of different ways that I do that at different levels for people to have, you know, different levels of access and support for me. Um, one of the best ways, uh, best because it's the most robust, at least credited by well-known publishers and agents as the most robust online training for authors that exists. And that training is called the Transformational Author Experience. Um, It's a 22-hour training taught not just by myself, but also taught by number one New York Times bestselling authors, uh, book marketing experts, agents, publishers, transformational leaders, and it's all free completely free to access all of the training um, that I actually have that the training is uh, from May 19th to May 30th of 2014 if you're watching this uh, in May you want to head over to my website do you have a special link or do you want me to just give out the main link for people to go to go ahead give out the main link and I'll include it under the video here okay awesome yeah you'll go to transformationalauthor.com again transformational author. Dot com, And that is by far the best way to be introduced to my world and to get the most amount of value for no cost at all. So you can see if it might be a fit for us to work further together. Um, and then what working further together looks like is I have my award-winning signature program called Get Your Book Done. Uh, That's a six-month coaching program. There's two different levels. One level, you just get strict, you know, you get access to online, uh, through my online university trainings, action guides, uh, recordings of live Q&A coaching calls, Um, or there's a version of that program where you get all of that plus access to get on group coaching calls and ask me your questions and let me guide you and help you in your writing process. So that's the six-month Get Your Book Done program. And then I have something called my Transformational Author Master Heart. 
uh, which is an eight-month transformational journey where if you are really committed to getting your story out there and sharing your transformational wisdom with others and guaranteed get published, I work with people over the course of eight months to birth their story and to transform themselves and their lives. And at the end of that process, we all get published together in, as you mentioned, that book, Pebbles in the Pond. So that's another way that I work with people. And uh, you have another program that's not even for authors, just for all soulful messengers uh, called the Soulful Messenger Home Study Program. And that helps you just connect with that deep soul's calling and to really understand why you're called to be a messenger um, and what you can do to liberate that message inside of you and just be um, what you were born to be and do what you were born to do. Um, Again, not specific for authors like all my other programs, but uh, since I teach and train so many, right now it's all in some sort of group format, whether it's, you know, 30 authors in my master heart or a couple hundred authors and get your book done or tens of thousands authors of authors in the transformational author experience, which actually isn't even just for authors. Like if you have a message inside of you and you want to be inspired um, to live your divine purpose and make a difference in the world, I would still recommend you go over to transformationalauthor.com, even if you've never thought of writing a book, Um, because some of the teachers there will will make a lasting, uh, lifelong impression on you, and I think really um, help you take whatever the next step is for you, with or without writing a book. So people can engage with you in different ways at different levels, depending on their unique personal circumstances and needs. Yeah, I, you know, it's everything. It's from, you know, free to $10,000 uh, is the range. And the reason why I feel really good about charging 10000 for my high-end programs is because I also know that if someone comes to me and doesn't have a budget that they can invest in their education, there's a way that I can at least, you know, once a year um, provide this training literally for tens of thousands. And it just feels good to make it available for free. Is there another way to contact you that you'd like to provide or should people just go to the website? Yeah, if you go to my main website at christinecloser.com, um, if there's a specific you know thing you want to contact me about, just go to the Contact Us page um, and you can fill out the information there and send that in. And um, yeah, that's another way to connect with me if you have questions or um, anything else. Just in Christine Closer, it's C-H on the Christine and K-L-O-S-E-R uh, on the last name. Well, Christine, this has been wonderful. Very inspiring. I know you're you're already touching a lot of lives and going to touch more. So thank you for the work you're doing in the world, and thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. It was my pleasure.